SpaceX Starlink's clone, Amazon's Project Kuiper, works. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have my brand new tea, finally. It's called Dark Temptation. This is my holiday tea. This is so, so, it's just obscene. <laughs> it's so good, so good. Like a hint of chocolate, spice, and just a little bit of pepper. I mean, I don't know. It is so yum. Anyways, I promise you guys we'll have this for the holidays. It is now available for pre-order. Go check it out. Go to jcristina.com forward slash shop or just go to jcristina.com. Anyways, enough of that self-promotion. God forbid. <laughs> Today is an interesting one. We're going to be talking about Amazon and Project Kuiper. I know a lot of you have been asking me about it. Is it going to be an alternative to SpaceX Starlink because Starlink is really expensive? Is Bezos going to be able to do Project Kuiper cheaper? Well, it's working, guys. It is working. I was reading an article that went over what they have done so far, and I want to bring this to your attention and then give you my commentary on it. And once again, at the end of this video, down below, I want to hear from you because this channel is all about you, not about me, some talking head here. So let's jump right into this article. It says, in a video, the company demonstrates Project Kuiper's test satellites powering internet access to make a purchase on Amazon.com and to facilitate a video call. Are all the pre-checks looking good? Copy, thank you. Contact start. Two way. We have two-way. We are getting internet traffic via the Kuiper network, navigating to Amazon.com now. Andrew is executing the demo. Right on cue, uh, the heavens have opened up a little bit and it is starting to rain significantly harder than it was earlier. Contact is starting now. We have, so over. we have two way. All right, confirmed. We have internet access via the Kuiper network. And I am searching for air rocket racers. And you're executing the demo. Page is loaded. I'm adding to my cart and confirmed. Don't and worry. Andrew just completed the first successful purchase from Amazon.com. Contact start. Two way. We have two way. All right, we have internet access via the Kuiper network. Joining the meeting. All right, cool. Uh, flight, this is McAllen. Go McAllen. I wanted to let you know that I am joining this time meeting right now via the Kuiper satellites, which are passing over the customer terminals as we speak. Congratulations on such a huge milestone. Thank you. Nice job, team. Now let's go build some more satellites. Awesome. Thanks, guys. McAllen, signing off. Following years of development, Amazon's satellite internet system, Project Kuiper, has finally shown that its technology works. The company today released a video demonstrating Project Kuiper's test satellites in Earth's orbit, beaming internet access to Amazon's engineers on the ground. Through satellite internet access, the engineers were able to stream from Amazon Prime Video, make a purchase on the e-commerce website, and conduct a video call between two users in Texas and Washington, seemingly with no lag. Quote, we can confirm a 100% success rate for our Project Kuiper protoflight mission. The successful test occurred more than one month after Amazon's launched a pair of prototype satellites to test Project Kuiper, a satellite internet system that seeks to rival SpaceX's Starlink. Last week, Amazon said the prototype satellite successfully maneuvered in low Earth orbit. Now, the company says that the satellites can fulfill their main objective to supply high-speed internet access to users on the ground. In a blog post, Amazon said it was able to download and upload internet data on Project Kuiper satellites. There is no word on the exact speed, but the broadband quality was good enough to enable 4K video streaming. That's for two people on that one satellite, not hundreds. 
The company only has two test satellites in orbit. Thank you. As a result, Amazon only had a 30 to 120 second window to communicate over the satellites, which are traveling at around 28,000 kilometers per hour, translating into about 17,300, let's call it, miles per hour if you like miles over kilometers. But as Project Kuiper expands, the company plans on operating hundreds and even thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit to ensure a robust coverage. Amazon adds that, quote, every major system and subsystem on board the two prototypes, from flight computers and solar arrays to our propulsion system and advanced radio frequency or RF communication payload, demonstrated not nominal or even better performance following launch. That's really good. Although we have already validated the core satellite and network design, we will continue running experiments over the next several months under different conditions and observe how our prototype satellites hold up to extremes in space. Amazon plans on using the insight from the test satellites to finalize their work on Project Kuiper production satellites. Expect the first batch to start launching during the first half of next year. The company then plans on kicking off a beta test with select commercial customers, commercial, not residential, commercial customers later in 2024. However, Amazon has serious catching up to do with SpaceX Starlink, which is already serving 2 million customers across the globe. It's actually almost two and a half million at this point. And they are correct. This, this article was absolutely perfect. So the way I look at this is I think it's great that Amazon Project Hyper is actually working according to what they're saying. They're not going to tell you that it was a failure, right? That would just be stupid. But they're saying that it's working. All their systems, their subsystems, their RF, their, their propulsion system, everything is nominal or even better. So that is fantastic because remember guys, we want to see competition. I want to see competition. A lot of you guys want to see competition. A lot of you guys have come to me and said, listen, Starlink, we really want it, but it's just too damn expensive. $120 a month. That's not cheap. And then paying 500 bucks, 600 bucks for the actual kit. It's a lot of money to get started with. Whereas a lot of other ISPs, they'll just give you the kit for nothing. Right? So, it is what it is. It would be nice to have some type of alternative out there to compete with Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink. Now, let's dive in a little bit here, okay? Starting out, the FCC approved Project Kuiper unanimously, five to zero. And they said, yes, Amazon, Bezos, you are allowed to launch this quote unquote mega constellation with 3,236 satellites. That's all good. And that Amazon is gonna be putting into this project about $10 billion. So that's a lot of money. That's not just a little bit, $10 billion is a lot. Well, for Bezos or Elon Musk, I mean, Elon Musk, he bought Twitter for what, 44 billion? So maybe 10 billion isn't a lot, but to me, it's a lot of money. Anyways, they're putting forth a lot of effort in this. Now, at the time when the FCC gave Amazon approval for Project Kuiper, they said, listen, you have to put 50% of your satellites in low Earth orbit by July of 2026. So half of that 3,236 is like 1,618, right? Doing the math. So 1,618 satellites they have to have in orbit by July of 2026. They have two so far, right? So they got to put 1,616. Now, it gets a little bit worse for Bezos' Amazon Project Kuiper here because while they have until 2026 to put 50% into orbit, they must have the other 50% in orbit by 2029, three years later. If they don't, once again, they lose that license. So... 
This is a big deal. I know some people, they don't think it's a big deal because we see another Falcon 9 launch out of Cape Canaveral here in Florida or Texas or California or somewhere, there is satellites being launched, literally multiple satellites every single week or multiple launches every single week. Each payload contains 21 to 23 satellites. So they got 21, let's say 22 over here, 23 over there, 22 over there, and then another 23. I mean, you're seeing sometimes up to 100 satellites in just a week or two. That is a lot, all right? So people are used to seeing that. Now, it's not going to be that easy for Bezos here because remember, he has contracts in to launch the satellites from Blue Origin to ULA, which is United Launch Alliance, as well as Arian Space. None of them have launched besides one company, and that wasn't even his own Blue Origin. I believe it was ULA that actually got that first payload of that first two prototype satellites into orbit. So... His own rocket company can't even get a satellite into orbit yet. I mean, this is a problem, guys. This is a problem. Remember, he has to get 1,600 and 16 more satellites into orbit not to lose the license. Is that possible? I really don't know. I just, I find it very, very doubtful. That's my personal opinion. So let's do the math, right? How many days until 2026 July? 947 days from today. So let's do the math. 16, 16, because they already got two satellites in orbit, divided by the 946, he needs to put 1.7, 1.7 satellites into orbit every single day. So if we multiply that by seven, you get 11.94, let's call it 12 satellites per week into orbit. My math might be off. Right? I'm not a mathematician. 12 satellites per week. All right? So what that means is Bezos' Amazon Project Kuiper will have to launch 50. It's actually over 50, but let's call it 50 satellites every single month for the next 31 months to be able to meet that deadline. That's not an easy task considering how long it took them to get the two into space. It was like years. There was delay after delay after delay, and it wasn't delays due to the satellites and the satellite production. The delays was getting a rocket to launch those satellites into LEO. Because remember, I did a video about this not that long ago where I said, Jeff Bezos is gonna need to pick up the phone and be like, hey, Elon, I need a ride share. I need to get some satellites into low Earth orbit. You know, can you give me a hand? Can you be my Uber driver? And you know, Elon would be like, yeah, Jeff, we'll do it for you. And just take the money because he doesn't care. He really doesn't care. He does not view Project Kuiper as any bit, not even a little bit of competition because of so far ahead they are. And just like they said in the article, I mean, Elon now is at like 2.5, close to 2.5 million customers with over 5,000 satellites in orbit, Okay. Amazon has until 2029 to get 3,000 in orbit. And I really don't even think that they're going to be able to meet their deadline of another 1,616 satellites in the next 31 months. I just don't think they're going to be able to do it. What do you think? Do you think they can? I hope they can. Because once again, I want to see the competition. Competition is so damn important. That's what happened with Ma Bell. Bell Atlantic, Bell, all the bells, right? The baby bells. They just took over. They were like a monopoly when it came to the phone systems, right? I cannot stand monopolies because they have full control over everything. They have full control over the product. If you don't like it, get screwed. We don't care. We're going to charge you X, not Y. Why? Because we said so. There's no competition. They can do that. So I really do believe competition is really mission critical when it comes to anything. We see it with the cell phone providers. I mean, cell providers are just, they're in all cahoots with each other anyways. They'll be like, hey, hey AT&T calls up over to T-Mobile or to Verizon. Be like, yeah, we're going to go up five bucks. What are you guys going to do? 
Um, yeah, we'll go up five dollars too. Why not? All right, you're gonna do it. We'll do it too. All right, good. Go. This is how it is. They're literally all the same. When you do the math on all of the providers, you might save five dollars here, or there might be a little promotion there, or if you're 55 or military, there might be a little bit more here than there. That's really about it. It's literally all the same. So. In my personal opinion, I do not think Bezos is going to be able to hit his goal of 1,616 more satellites in orbit in 31 months unless, unless he gives Elon a call. And you know how these billionaires are? They have extremely, extremely big heads, right? They're very arrogant, very hard-headed, and a lot of times they just will not do what's good for the company they'll do what's good for them, what makes them feel good. Remember, Jeff Bezos already got sued by his own company for not, for not getting those satellites into orbit sooner by the shareholders, all right? They see the problem that's going on here, right? So anyways, I wanna know what you think. Once again, down below, let's have this conversation. If you enjoyed the content, as I always say, throw it a thumbs up. That's very, very helpful. Tell your friends, family, and colleagues about this channel so we can grow it. We're getting close to that 100,000 mark. Hopefully we can hit it maybe by first quarter, 2024. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. We'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Also, if you're not subscribed as of yet, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, thank you. Click this little button over here and then click all. So when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a thank you button. You can click there and give a dollar or two if you want. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better, much better. <laughs> also, if you want more Starlink content, I'll put together a Starlink playlist right over here. Click on that after you're done watching this video. There's over 200 Starlink specific videos that you can check out there. Also, if you have not downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jcristina.com forward slash eBooks. Also the tease, we got that Dark Temptation pre-order is up. Go check it out, jcristina.com. And finally, head over to my website, jcristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I have invented over the many years for you and me. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up to support me and my family. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Many, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.